Hey there, in this video we are going to look at the absolute value of a function. This is going to be part one where we focus on the absolute value of a linear function. Alright, so looking at the absolute value of a function. In other words, we're going to look at this function as the absolute value of that function that's inside there. So we're going to compare absolute value of a half x minus 2 to just a half x minus 2. And that's going to be our strategy for gaining some insight as to what this function looks like and things about it. Just to start with here, the first thing that we're going to do is find the x and y intercepts of that function. And you do that exactly the same way as you would do with any other function. If you want the y-intercept, you're going to put in x equals 0. And if you want the x-intercept, you're going to put in y equals 0. So let's do this one first. If we're going to substitute in 0 there, we will write this out. y equals absolute value a half, except I'm going to sub in a 0 there. And I'll use color so we can make sure we see that we sub that value in. A half, absolute value of a half times 0 minus 2. So if we're working this out, half times 0 is just 0. We have 0 minus 2. And we have absolute value of that is negative 2 inside there, which is 2. Absolute value of negative 2 becomes 2. So that's our y-intercept of our absolute value function. We can do this one. Similar thing here, although we're substituting 0 out here for for y. We'll write it out first. We're going to substitute 0 for that. So I will instead write a 0 there. If we want to do this, this is an equation that we need to solve. Now this is going to require a slight bit of thinking here. It says absolute value of some stuff inside equals 0. Now the only way that that can be true, if it says absolute value of something equals 0, then that's something. This something inside here has to be zero. The only way that that equation can be true is if that thing inside is zero. So since this is equal to zero, I can just write it without the absolute value brackets there because there's going to be only one thing that that thing that I highlight in blue can be, and it's zero. So if I write a new equation without the absolute value brackets, I can solve that to find the value. So if I add two to both sides, I get that. If I multiply by 2 on both sides, to get rid of that half, I get 4. So I have my intercepts there. I have y-intercept is 2 and x-intercept is 4. Now if I'm going to create the graph of that, we're going to do what I alluded to before, which is we're going to use our knowledge about the graph of a half x minus 2 to think about what absolute value of a half x minus 2 looks like. All right, so you're using the function that's inside the absolute value brackets to get an idea of what that absolute value function looks like. So our strategy, again, is going to be to use the graph of 1 half x minus 2 to draw the graph of absolute value of a half x minus 2. So what we need to do first is draw that a half x minus 2. I'm assuming that you're You've seen linear functions before and you can think about this, you know that that's the y-intercept and that that's the slope of that straight line. So we have y-intercept of negative two and we have a half. So we're going one up for every two over. So if I'm following that along there, I'll just put a dot over there. I don't need to leave all those staircase things on there. Now I'm actually going to draw it as a dotted line because it's not actually the function itself. This is just what we're using to get our absolute value function. So that's that. So if we want to draw now the absolute value of that function, of this function we have here, we have to think, if I substituted all those same x values in here, I would get all those same y values that I just would have gotten. Except that when I take the absolute value of those values, anything that would have ended up negative is now going to be positive. So what that means is anywhere down here, anything below is now going to be up above. The part that was up above is going to stay up above, but the part below is going to be now up above. 
So say this point here that was negative two, this thing has a y-intercept of negative two, and as we saw up here, it has a y-intercept now of positive two, so that is actually up here instead. Any other value, like that one that has a y-value of negative three is now gonna have a y-value of positive three, and so on. Negative one, positive one. So the graph that we end up with for this absolute value of a half x minus two is actually going to look like a v-shaped thing here. This part of the graph is going to be the same, but the other part is going to be this reflection up above here. That part's going to be up there. All right. If we're looking at the domain and the range, the domain stays the same. You can have any x value is okay there, but now that you reflected the negative part up above, your range is going to change to just positive numbers are zero. So the domain is all real, but the range is y has to be greater than or equal to zero for that absolute value function. All right. If we're going to express this as a piecewise function to, ex to write it with those two separate pieces, we're going to say absolute value of a half x minus two is equal to the two parts here. The part that doesn't change is where you're at four or greater, right? So this is just equal to a half x minus two when x is greater than or equal to four, that x-intercept. Whereas the other side of the x-intercept there, it's actually gonna be the opposite of that. To make it the opposite, we can just put a negative outside of the whole thing here when x is less than four, all right? This you could also write without the brackets there, you could instead make it negative a half x plus two. That's another way you could write this, right? You could distribute that minus sign, All right? So this was a first example of looking at the absolute value of a function. In this case, it was the absolute value of a linear function. In uh, part two, we're gonna look at the absolute value of a quadratic function, so stay tuned.